In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a Thunderbolt fighter for the newly released Aeronautica Imperialis. And I have to say a big thank you to Goblin Gaming for getting this out to me before launch date to do the tutorial. And if you want to get about 20% off your wargaming, you can check out the link in the description. Let's get started with this Thunderbolt fighter then. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the flight stand. So the ball that goes into the model sits quite flush. So all I've done is I've wrapped some masking tape around the flight stand. Uh, I've used Tamiya masking tape there, which is it's quite expensive, but it does give you that little bit of extra flexibility. Um, I'll pop a link to that down below. But what I've done on the base then is I've used just normal household masking tape that you can get from DIY store. And the reason I've done this is because it just makes it really easy to prime and not only that it also makes it really easy to paint. So with that done let's crack on. So the first base colour we're going to do is for the fuselage we're going to go Mechanica Standard Grey and we're just going to paint this all over the plane. So take your time work it on. Where you come to rivets obviously don't worry too much about painting over the rivets but where you can just try not to paint over the lines between the panels it's okay if you do uh, but if you don't paint over those lines it does just make it a little bit easier when it comes to going back in and, and cleaning things up okay so this might take a couple of thin coats because again you, you do want that thin coat you don't want it to go on too thickly because that will hinder us later on so just work your way around the entirety of the fuselage of the Thunderbolt. You can see there it's definitely going to need a second coat. But at least we're in control of it and it's going on quite nicely. So take your time, work your way around and I will come back once I've managed to paint the entire thing. So two thin coats of Mechanica Standard Grey. Nice, straightforward, easy peasy. Now of course if you've got Mechanica Standard Grey paint in terms of the spray can then you could do this in about five seconds, easy job. But you will have to go back in and just do some of those lines. As I'm looking at it, I may do that anyway. But let's just carry on and we'll get the base paints down first and then see where we go. So I've not painted the tail fin. I've left that black and I'm going to... I think what we're going to do is we're going to give him a white tail fin. We're going to give him some white stripes along the wings there. So we're going to take Celestra Grey. And with the Celestra Grey, we're just going to take this panel as our guide. So I'm going to paint this panel in the Celestra Grey. So you can see that it's going to take a couple of coats to get this done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that down through there. So just take your time. Draw that guideline. So I'm going to let that dry, see what the coverage is like. Um, I'm going to do the other side as well. I'm going to do the tail fin. So obviously with the tail fin, Celeste Grey on black, you are going to take two coats to do this. But just get it on there and see, see how it looks. So there might be a bit too much water uh, on my brush actually. It's probably a bit wet before I start painting with it. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll go in and Go over it again. And then the other thing we want to do with Celestra Grey is we want to paint the entirety of the underneath because the underneath of the aircraft is a lot lighter depending on the sky of the planet it's fighting on. And I'll probably take it off the stand to do this once the other bits are dry. Uh, and that's to provide a little bit of camouflage against the sky. So I'll just work the Celestra Grey on the underside as well, work it into all the bits. So you can see it's quite thin because I've got quite a bit of water on it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that off cam. And then when we come back, we'll have a look at all the base coats because they should all be done then. All right. So we've got a nice thick even coat of Celestra Grey. So I've done it on. I've got those two stripes there. I've got the tail fin. 
and also we've got the underneath as well. Um, I dry brushed a little bit of underneath and that kind of helped me put a, a decent coat down. So I just want to go in and re-establish some of these panel lines. So to do that I've got some null oil. Get a good tip on your brush and just run that null oil down through these panel lines. Now I'm going to do this quite quick and quite messy um, and the reason I'm not overly concerned about it being messy is because we're going to do a bit of weathering and we're going to finish this this plane up with dry brushing and some streaks and I'll show you how to do all that of course um, but we're not going to worry too much about having clean panel lines because when we come in and do that weathering it's going to take out a lot of the areas where we may have gone outside of those lines so just work your way through this like I said don't worry about taking too long as you can see I'm doing this really really quick I've done those you know two wings in no time at all so I'm going to work my way around the rest of the plane now uh, when it comes to things like the cockpit I'm just going to throw it in there because you can have lots of natural shadow anyway and it picks up all those rivets so work your way around, don't take too long over it, and then let it dry, we'll come back. I'm going to do the underneath as well, and then we'll start to move on to the metallics. So once that null oil is dry, you can see I've just painted it, and I've just pulled it all back towards the back of the plane. It just gives you a really dirty look. Um, same for the, the top, and that's fine, not worried about that at all. So I'm going to pop this back on the flight stand. And I'm going to move on and start painting the metallics. So the metallics will provide quite a stark coloration on this. So just take your time and, you know, we've got things like the piping for the engine, if you look at the box art. So work that on there. We've also got the engines. So we can paint those. I'm just going to go around and show you just a little bit that I'm going to paint silver before I go off and get this finished off cam. Again, be careful you don't get this on any of the bits you've already painted. We've also got um, the LAS cannons on the on the nose of the aircraft. So we're just going to kind of just highlight them. Don't worry too much about painting the whole part of the, the weapon because of the scale we're working with here. Just, just highlighting them will work just as well because we're going to go in and give them a wash anyway. Uh, we've also got the Gatling cannon style weapon here that needs painting. And we've also got the front console of the aircraft which we're going to look to paint silver as well. I say front console, it's not the front console, it's just kind of the nose of the aircraft. So I'm going to go away and finish the rest of these metallics on cam, uh, off cam rather, and when we come back we'll uh, we'll shade those down. Once we've got those metallics done, it's just back to null and oil. Uh, we're just going to use that then to wash over them, just add a little bit more depth. So take your time with this. Enjoy the process and having it on the flight stand really does make it easy to move around and get into all those other areas that you need to get into. So I'm going to work on get all of this uh, metallics washed with the null and oil and then come back and we can start to brighten him back up and get him close to finish. Once the null and oil is dry on those metallic parts, we're going to start to brighten this up a little bit. So the first colour we're going to use is Dawnstone, and I'm using a, this isn't a, a normal dry brush, it's a makeup brush. I'll put a link to them in the description down below, but I just find them so much better than the dry brushes you get in the market. And what we're going to do is we're just going to 
really lightly just work it over the Mechanica standard grey. And this will be quite subtle. And notice the direction that I'm doing this. I'm doing it away from the front of the plane and working my way towards the back. And that is for the simple reason that planes tend to fly forward. And because they fly forward, they're going to be hitting stuff in the air going that way and any little chips, it's all going to chip away that way on the plane. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a minute. Next up, I'm going to take some administratum grey. So this is a lighter grey again. I'm just going to put a little bit on the same dry brush. So if I move out of the way, it's the same dry brush. And I'm just going to work it into the bristles using some kitchen roll. I'm going to come back again, which can be start off really light. So you see there, you start to get some chipping. Let's just work it down. The wing. And also down the cockpit as well. The rear airfoils that is starting to look pretty good so that's the darker gray taken care of we've also got the white stripes and the uh, aerofoil on the back of the plane to take care of so i'm going to go ahead and wash the dry brush make sure that when you wash it before you use it again that it is totally dry and then we'll have a look at doing these parts here, the airfoil, and obviously the underneath of the plane as well. So we're going to move on to Ulthuan Grey now. We're just going to dry brush the tail, and we're also going to dry brush these white sections here. And we've also got quite a bit to do underneath. So we're going to work that all across the aeroplane. The missiles and the tail aerofoils there. So we're getting some decent streaking going on there now. If you want to put some specific streaking, then you can just like that, and maybe give a little bit of extra work to those missiles, so that there's just a, a bit of differentiation on them in comparison to the rest of the plane. So that's looking nice, dirty and streaked. The top of the plane is looking nice, dirty and streaked. The rear airfoil also looking dirty and streaked, so I'm really happy with that as our basic colours. So I think what we'll do next is we'll do the cockpit. And the reason I say we'll do the cockpit next is because that's going to be a lot lighter than the rest of the plane. So that'll kind of give us a good gauge of where we're going colour-wise. Uh, but other than that, we are really close to being finished. Really simple and straightforward job, this. So for the cockpit, I'm going to use Corax White. And this is going to take a couple of coats, probably. But just pop it in over those dark areas. Taking your time not to paint over what you've already got down there. So that's covering okay at the moment. And you see the, the, the joy of the flight stand. It just means you can alter the angle that you're painting quite nicely and quite easily. Without having to worry about moving the model around in your hands. You can see there that's probably going to need another coat. Same for the front of the glass. Because we don't want to put it on too thick. And 
it's really important when you're doing this that you've got a point on your brush. So I'm pick it up a little bit and work it in there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the glass parts. Um, probably add a second coat on there and then we'll come back and see how we're looking. So it took just two coats of Corox White to get the inside of the glass done. There's a couple of other things I've thought of whilst we've got that Corax wiped out. And the first is these, uh, we've got the light uh, and the target is, uh, but also along here, I just wanna put some streaks of Corax white. Um, just some thin streaks to kind of illustrate some additional um, chipping and we're going to do the same on the tail fin as well apologies if you can hear next door's dog barking um, I'm just going to move you can see I'm just moving my arm on my hand quite in quite a jagged motion just to kind of add the additional stuff there what we'll do is we'll add some more weathering on with uh, some Skaven Blight Dinge later on So once I let that dry, um, I'll go and sort the palette out and we'll do that cockpit glass next. So for the cockpit glass, I'm going to use Griff Charger Grey, which is a contrast paint. And I'm just going to pop it on top of that Corax White. I'm going to work it in, put it on fairly thick as well. And then we're going to use physics to hopefully get a really good effect. So we're going to pop him off and we're going to put him upside down. We're going to let him dry that way. Now if you have some balance issues, and I'm not sure quite what I've done there because he's landed perfectly fine, um, you can use like a paint cap underneath. But I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to let it dry and hopefully after about five minutes gravity will have been my friend and it will have taken it down to the top and we'll get a really nice, really nice effect. All right. So we'll come back, have a look at it, and then we'll do the last bit of weathering before we're done. That's turned out pretty good for the cockpit. So the next thing I do is going to get just the target as done. I'm going to use Ethermatic Blue for that, which again is a contrast paint. I'm just going to paint it on there like that. And on the one just in there. We've got a bit too much on my brush, so I'm just going in there, work it back on, make sure that we've got enough on both of those. And again, that's really simple, really straightforward. So I'm going to let that dry and then come back in. I think we'll have a little look at putting some further weathering on, and then we'll just tidy some bits and pieces up and start to think about calling it a day. Okay, so with the Skaven Blight Dinge, we don't want to add very much at all. So remember we just made these marks here with the Corax White earlier, we just want to just add some tiny bits of skin and blight dinge along the way. We've got both wings. So again it's a real subtle effect but it did just help. Maybe we put, if we look at the other, maybe we'll put a little just another straight lines going through it there where bits of debris or rocks or weapons have actually flown through the air and hit the the aircraft and we've also got along the tail as well so just work that into it kind of in the same way that we we have before. Fairly straightforward. Uh, and we've got the underside of the plane to do as well. So I'll, I'll go off and do the underside off cam. Uh, we'll come back, we'll do some exhaust dust and exhaust weathering, and then we'll think about what kind of decals we might want to apply to this model. Once we finished the skin blight dinge there's also another sort of like just put some streaks to the to the gray panels this is that corax white that still got white 
and just you can just put some nicks on just make sure you keep it in a straight line just like that and just add some nice visual effects for you to or for the eye to get drawn to don't forget you've got the engines to do as well so this is Corax white remember less is always more take your time you can always go in and add more but it's a bit more difficult to kind of take it away sometimes so there we are we leave it like that I'm just going to get the palette set up for the exhaust and the color we're going to use for that is Corvus Black the reason I'm saying use Corvus Black is because it's it's very dark, but it's very matte. Whereas I find a Abaddon Black does have a bit of a sheen to it, so it doesn't really give you the dull effect that you get with smoke. So for the exhaust uh, and the Corvus Black, I'm going to use a couple of different techniques. I'm going to use the makeup brush again, um, and I'm going to use some dry brushing. So for these exhaust vents, I'm going to dry brush towards the back. And then in other areas, so if we look underneath, for example, I might look to just stipple a bit on behind where you might get launch marks from those missiles. I might stipple it onto the exhaust themselves and into these parts of the plane here where you're going to get some of it coming out. And I may just stipple and dry brush onto those tail fins as well because you're going to get that dirty air going back towards uh, the back of the aircraft there and then we've got just we've got some vents here as well so I might just stipple it on maybe we'll just drop some on the wings as well just to tone down some of the weathering we've done just add some patches of it across it's looking pretty good uh, and the last kind of place we're going to need to do it is just along in there so it's quite subtle at the moment so let that dry properly I think I'm going to go in and add a little bit more just to darken it up um, and then this Thunderbolt fighter is done the last thing I will go in and do because I forgot to do it before now is I'm just going to put some black on the nozzles of the las cannons there just to separate them from the the rest of the plane it's a nice simple effect to do and I'm going to clear off the the black and I'm just going to take a little bit of white I'm going to use the Corvus white I'm just going to a nice thin line down the cockpit because it kind of gives a bit of a, a reflection and also clears up where maybe the contrast paint hasn't quite dried the way you want it to and that's that Thunderbolt fighter now complete so there we have it a really mean and weathered looking Thunderbolt fighter I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's been a lot of fun to make. If you have, then please leave a like and a comment down below, and please consider subscribing to the channel. If you do want to support the channel, then you can use some of the links in the description. Now, they are affiliate links, but it doesn't actually cost you anything, and I do get a small percentage of any sale. It really, really does go a long way to help. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.